Okay, so let's now talk about a second design attempt without using inheritance. You will notice that for the second design attempt, it seems like you can even do it without having an OOP, without having an OO programming language. For example, the second design attempt can well be done using a procedural language like a C, which you learned previously. Okay, let's see what a second attempt is. Let me present to you this only a single class or single module over here, only a single one, rather than having two as, uh, as in the previous design attempt. So we only got just this particular class over here, just this one here. It's called students. Okay, and then for the student class, what attribute do we have? Uh, we have constructor for sure, okay? And we got courses, we got premium rates, we got discount rate, also we got something called kind, the kind of student we have. And given that is of type integer, and uh, integer we are really talking about the 32-bit integer. So in theory, you can encode two to the power of 32 kinds of students. I think it's more than necessary for sure for the uh, reality. So that seems to be a good working solution. And then we also got, uh, in order to make, uh, in order to construct a student, you have to really say what kind of student we are talking about. Let's say maybe for resident students, it's going to be one. And for non-resident student, it's going to be two, for example. Of course, in this case, you, you rather just put a Boolean as opposed to integer, but I think putting integer will just be more general. But later on, if you got more kinds of students, uh, a Boolean attribute will not be uh, enough. Okay, And then you will simply assign the kind to be a kind. That's a simple class we have. That's a second design attempt without having two classes. And then we put both the premium rate and discount rate over here. Depending on the kind of students we are talking about, we are going to use either premium rates or discount rate, but not both. Okay, the implementation for the routines is going to uh, ensure this is the case. Okay, hopefully you have no question over here. And then you may want to pause the video without looking at these two. So yeah, I, I should have covered these, but Anyway, so you can think about how you would actually implement get tuition and uh, also to implement register for both for either the uh, right re uh, resident students or non resident student. How would you do it? If you haven't seen the answer on the right hand side just yet, I would suggest you pause the video and do some exercise yourself. Okay, so now let's go over the solution quickly. Let's say for the case of get tuition. Okay, let me just uh, let me use a marker here. When we talk about get tuition over here, okay, get tuition. So you can see we want to calculate the tuition eventually, and then we we'll simply go across the courses, and then we we'll simply calculate uh, the fee. Okay, that one's easy. Basically, just go over the students' uh, courses uh, courses link list, and then try to uh, just go over uh, the course one by one and uh, add up the course fee as before. So now this is the issue. When we try to really count to decide how to really apply the base rate so far. How do we actually uh, either to apply the premium rates or to really apply the discount rate? Discount rate. How do we know which one to apply? Well, it depends on the kind of student we're talking about. If the kind is simply equal to one, we need to actually apply the premium rates. If that's equal to two, we're going to apply the discount rate. Hopefully you can see, right? So the, working, the implementation works and makes sense. Let's do something similar, okay? Let's say when we try to implement for a register uh, for a particular course, and let's say we have the following policy. Let's say in case we talk about a resident students, they can take more courses, they can take six. In case we talk about non-resident students, because they may have to commute, so they have to take uh, fewer, let's say. So now, depending on what kind of student we are talking about, they might uh, their maximum capacity of the courses they can take will be different. Okay, so once we know about the max over here, which would be assigned to either six or four, so now we can actually do this uh, registration to say, if you already reached, reaches the max, in that case, there will be some error. Otherwise, you can definitely uh, register for the course. Okay, you can see, it seems like for every meaningful routine that you want to really uh, uh, either query or command, that you want to implement for this, uh, for this second design attempt, you always have to do some kind of discrimination uh, using some if statements to say if it is kind number one, I do something. If it's kind number two, we, I do something else. Depending on how many kinds of student you have, it, uh, it will determine how long the if else if list will look like. Okay, so now that's about the second design attempt. 
you may want to pause the video right now and then to think about whether this is a good design. And we're going to use the same three criteria as before. Let me go over with you and then you may choose to pause the video. Design criteria number one. What about cohesion? Criteria number two. What about single choice principle? Specifically, what if a new kind of student is introduced, right? Some change. And what if uh, ex an existing kind of student becomes obsolete? Okay, that's some hints to you about single choice principle. And design attempt, uh, oh, so, and there's this design criteria number three. So how do you build a student management system class accordingly? Would it be as inconvenient as before or is actually better? Okay, that's my question, okay? Okay, you can pause the video and think about it. Okay, assuming that you have thought about it, so let's now talk about each one by one. Do you think we have now uh, satisfied the cohesion principle? I will argue no. In the previous uh, design attempt, we actually got resident students with the premium rates only and non-resident students with a discount rate only. But now we actually got students, in which case we got premium rates and discount rate, both in the same class, right? So now it would be, if you look on, of course, you might say at the runtime, depending on what kind what kind it is. But whenever we talk about design, you, you may also want to uh, argue like aesthetically if the attribute really makes sense in the same class. So now you're saying that we are basically saying for the students over here. So now in the in case kind is equal to one. OK, that so that means we are talking about a resident students. In that case, would discount rate still make any sense? It wouldn't. In this case, this would not make sense. Or it's simply not applicable. Okay, similarly, I'm just using another color. In case the kind is equal to two. So that means the current student is non resident students. In that case, for sure, discount rate will make sense. But would the premium rate actually make sense? That's a question. The answer is no, it wouldn't make sense. Would not apply. Okay. So you can see there are two possible violations for the cohesion principle, right? Okay. So you can see in the case where kind is equal to one, the premium rate doesn't make sense. Oh, sorry. In the case the kind is equal to one, discount rate doesn't make sense. In the case where kind is equal to two, in that case, uh, the premium rate doesn't make sense. All right. So that's a violation for cohesion. Hopefully you can see that. So now let's move on to the second one. What about single choice principle over here? Is there any code duplicates? There is, but not the kind of code duplicates that's so straightforward uh, as in the previous one, okay? I can tell you the code duplicates you have is about the if structure. I would say that's a slightly trickier uh, code duplicate you have, you have to watch out for. And then we'll revisit this particular code duplicates later in a design pattern called a state design pattern. So you can look forward to it, okay? So now let me tell you what the duplicates are. Basically, for any meaningful query or command you want to implement, you always have to check to read in order to discriminate uh, in order to discriminate on the current kind of students. So you always have to say if kind is equal to one, do something else. If kind equals e is equal to two, do something else. Similarly, here you gotta repeat it. If kind is equal to one, you gotta do something else. If kind is equal to two, you gotta do something else. Right? So you can see the orange part is exactly where the duplicates are. And then, if you want to dis if you want to implement another new routine, uh, either a command or a query, you still have to uh, duplicate this particular structure. Okay. So now, why would it violate the single choice principle? Well, since you see already, you got duplicates. So that means anytime there's any change, you have to modify uh, multiple places. Let me give you two scenarios to think about. Right. That's what I put over here. Number one. A new kind of students is introduced. So let's say we got, uh, let's say we currently we got, uh, potentially you can have an invariance over here, I forgot to mention. Currently you can say invariant would be uh, one less than or equal to kind and also less than or equal to two, right? If you only got two kinds of students. Let's say we want to introduce a new kind of students. Let's say maybe international students, right? If I do that, so I don't need to create any new class, by the way. I only need to change the invariant over here from two to three, the upper bound. And now what should I do? 
for get tuition. What should I modify? Okay, so hopefully you can see that you may want to pause the video before I do it, right? Assuming that you have thought about it, you have to add over here else if kind equals three. And then you have to do something over here. I'm just going to omit the details over here. You're going to do something over here, right? And then you said the only place you have to handle for international students. Not really, because international, stu international students also need to be able to register, right? In that case, what you got to do is you have to say over here to set a max. So you're going to say else if over here, kind equals three. And then in that case, you got to do something over here. Again, I'm going to omit the details. Okay, you can see again, we got duplicates. Duplicates over here and duplicates over here. It's not a single place that you have to change. Again, in order to really reach the new consistency, you're really trading that by uh, duplicates. So that's about this uh, first change you might introduce. What about the second one? The second one is saying an existing coin is obsolete. Okay, let's say for some reason, uh, the university decides that they no longer support uh, on-campus student, let's say. So we don't have our resident students anymore, okay? In that case, first of all, we gotta change the invariance over here. So now rather than the upper, lower bound being one, it's now going to be two. So we don't have kind number one anymore, let's say, okay? So in that case, what should we do? Well, we definitely should, oh, again, think about it, maybe on the positive video, right? So now we want to get rid of this particular guy here, right? So there's no premium rates anymore. And also, of course, this should be deleted. But this one is okay. That's this one is necessary. Okay. After this, of course, you gotta change from else if into if. Okay. That's the uh, first change I have to make uh, on the routine. Is that the only change I have to make? The answer is no, because now not only that, uh, resident student is no longer applicable for get getting tuition. Also, it's not applicable either for register. In that case, I also have to delete this particular part over here, right? okay? So you can see that's a second change. Again, you can see there's multiple changes I need to make in order to uh, really make, uh, in order to make this particular design change. Again, it violates single choice principle. Okay, hopefully you can see why the second design attempt satisfies cohesion, but it does not satisfy a uh, single choice principle. So let's now go on to the third uh, design criterion to judge. Okay. The third one, again, is about uh, how do we build a student management system accordingly? So that's a question. Okay. So now, how do we do it? Uh, let me just keep this uh, page uh, clean. So we might refer back to this for some definition. But let me just uh, give you some uh, uh, ideas about how to judge the third criterion. So let's say we have this uh, student management system uh, class over here. So now how many link lists, how many linear collections do we need for the students? In the previous design attempt, since we got two kinds of students, we got two classes, so we need two. But now in this case, it's good. We just need one. So only students of type, link list of students. So that's a good thing. So only one. Uh, don't forget for the students over here, depends on the kind. So uh, at the runtime, you gotta be careful. Kind could be either one or two in this, uh, in this case over here. And then we can say, we only need to say add students, and then of, we, which will take students, right? We'll simply extend the student into the linked list. And then when you say register all, think about why this might work. Since there's only one single linked list over here, let me just emphasize that. There's only a single linked list in the student management, management system, and there is only uh, one list to worry about in the, in the loop. Consequently, so if you go over the students over here and then you say register, how can this work really? Okay, let me just draw just partially how the runtime uh, structure would look like and then show it to you. Okay, basically think about this. Uh, okay, so the student management system is really pointing to, okay, SMS objects and then uh, we got SS for students. And that one there, let's say it's pointing to let's say a link list of different students over here, right? For example, and now let's say this is the first students over here, S, and also the second one is also going to be of the same type, also students. And remember, there's a very important attribute over here called kind over here. So now the kind 
is going to be different at the runtime, right? So now, for example, you might have, let's say the first one is a, a non-resident students. In that case, the kind over here is simply just two. And let's say for the second student there is resident students. In that case, the kind would be maybe one, right? So you can see one value is two, the other value is actually one. So now when you actually call the register, why would that work? So now we recall actually what's in there, right? So now S is simply of type students. And when you call the student uh, register routine, so now recall in the register over here, we say that if the kind is e either equal to one or equal to two, we're going to set a max accordingly. And then we'll actually extend the courses into the student. So everything will just work out because we do have the kind information over here. So when we actually get to this particular students at the runtime over here, we're going to use the kind. Uh, value two. And when we get to this particular student, we're going to use the kind value one. So things will work out quite nicely for this particular design attempt. So now let me just say one more thing here, just for detail. When you actually from the client side, how do you build up the course management system? So you have to declare RS of type students. NRS also of type students, the same. Okay, let me use a different color, maybe for NRS, for also of type students. So now once I have created a course and also SMS, how do I initialize the students? So let me just show you how you can use it. So you will have to say, for example, creates over here, and then the first one will be RS. You're going to say creates RS the make. And don't forget, the make does require you to actually pass the kind over here. So we have to go back here, and then uh, for RS, it's going to be one. And similarly, so now we're going to say, what about NRS? So we're going to say creates NRS dot make. And then the kind will be two. So that's a missing part you have to know as a client, right? So now you can see it would be actually very nice if we don't have to hard code the kind of student over here because managing magic number is really a no-no for actually your design uh, quality. So you want to make sure you don't really have to manage. Well, of course, you can work, make it work by declaring some uh, maybe constants with names, but it's not as good still. So I just say uh, for the second design attempt, uh, it would definitely violates the uh, uh, single choice principle over here very severely. So that's something you really want to watch out for. So for the, for the second design attempt, if you really have no OO support, in your language, for example, if you're programming C. However, you would like to simulate how the method call and also how the uh, polymorphism dynamic binding might work in, in uh, Java or in iPhone. In that case, this might be the design you want to go for. However, if your language does support OO, like in iPhone or Java, in that case, you shouldn't really use this design attempt. So that would be the take home message for this particular uh, attempt. That would be my comments for you. Okay, so now finally, so now you can see that's how you build up the SMS by adding the students, you can add RS, add NRS by calling just the same uh, command over here, which is different from the first design attempt. So you really want to contrast the two and see what's the pros and cons for each one of them. Okay. Okay. What if more kinds of students are going to be introduced? So that's another question for you. Well, in that case, apparently we don't have to. We don't. Uh, we still maintain a single students over here, a single students linked list over here, and also this part here doesn't doesn't have to change. All we have to change would be, as I said before, in order to really add a new kind of students, we will need to actually add this else if, this else if over here. So that will violate single choice principle. But once it is done, things will work out. Because dynamically, when you actually call the register over here, uh, let's say I just got another kind of student here. For example, I might just get an uh, international student, for example, over here, international students. And then I can say creates, uh, international students dot make and then I'll say three in that case I can say SMS dot add students and then I can say at is uh, international students okay I was add it if I say register all it will still work it's not an issue okay so the main issue is really about the violation of single choice principle for design attempt number two okay review this and then make sure you're okay before we move on to the ultimate solution by using inheritance